right, this morning we're going to have a little singing. And uh, I've asked Miss Taylor to sing something for us. We'll see what the Lord's got for us. And uh, you pray for her as she sings. And uh, we've got several folks out of town. We've got some folks sick. Uh, if you would, please remember them and pray for them. Uh, and uh, please pray for the meeting tonight. Ask the Lord to meet with us and help us. And uh, that sure would be a blessing. Uh, we're living in days that are getting darker, by the, seemingly by the hour. And uh, we need the Lord more than anything else. And so uh, let's pray and ask him uh, to meet with us this morning. Amen. You pray. Yes.
funny, I, t I asked Miss Kayla to sing, and uh, she had no idea what I was doing. <coughs> but it's funny that she would sing that song. The Lord has a way of uh, uh, working things out. Oh, yeah. He don't need you. Right. He don't need me. Yeah. Uh, he's God all by himself. Yeah. Man without God is nothing. God without man is still God. Right. And uh, he don't need me. But yeah. boy, do I sure need him. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate the Lord confirming that thing in my heart. And... Uh, Appreciate the good singing. Yeah. Uh, this morning, I'm going to do something a little different. I want to take the Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 16. 1 Corinthians, chapter number 16. And when you get 1 Corinthians, chapter number 16, I want you to hold your place there. And I want you to get Galatians, chapter number 5. The book of Galatians. Chapter number 5. So 1 Corinthians 16, Galatians chapter number 5. Now when you get Galatians number 5, I want you to get one more place. Philippians chapter number 1. I typically don't ask you, I typically don't read three texts, but I feel like it's important this morning uh, to establish the foundation of the message. So it's 1 Corinthians 16, Galatians chapter number 5, and Philippians chapter number 1. The book of Philippians chapter number 1. We will read those in that order. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 16. If you would look at verse number 13. Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Galatians chapter number 5. Look at verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. One more place, Philippians 1. Look at verse 27, Philippians 1, 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. Now I'm going to read two more to you. Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 1. Just a few pages over if you care to turn there. Philippians 4 and verse number 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so... Stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. 2 Thessalonians 2.15 Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Let's pray. Our Father, this morning I pray you would help us You'd guide us and guard us, anoint us and use us. Lord, I pray, Lord, that the uh, Holy Host would sit in this place. Lord, and the Spirit of God would speak to, move on, deal with, touch, help, and bless your people. Lord, we need you. Lord, we pray you'd help us this morning. We'll thank you and praise you wherever you do. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You will notice a common theme in the verses that I've just read to you. That theme we find over and over uh, is this. Stand fast. Right. Stand fast. Amen. Now, to understand that term, you must realize that the term stand fast is a military term. Amen. 
you will find uh, that this military term has three distinct meanings. I want to give them to you by way of introduction on my way to the message. You will find that it has three distinct meanings. When I was in the army, when an officer, our commander, walked into the room, the first person who saw that officer would yell attention. We would all stop whatever we were doing. And we would, uh, if you, regardless of what you were doing, you stop and you would come to the position of attention. Amen. Once that officer entered the room, he would say these words, stand fast. Right. Now, what that term means, number one, is this. Continue to do what you're doing. Continue to do what you're doing. And you will find uh, he means this. Don't change what you were up to. Right. I mean, maybe you were sweeping uh, the parking lot and he walked by. Maybe you were at work at the shop working on something. Maybe you were in the barracks right. uh, uh, cleaning your room or something. But whenever our commander showed up, we were to stop what we were doing. And we would stay stopped until we were given the order to stand fast. Now, what it meant was this. Yes, stop. Acknowledge our commander's presence. Right, right. Recognize that the commanding officer has walked into the room. But in just a moment, that commanding officer would say these words, stand fast. And what he meant was, uh, you need to get back to what you were doing. Amen. I've already given you orders. You already know what, what to do. Right. I, I, I'm glad you stopped and acknowledged my presence and showed the reverence and respect you should. But now that you've done that, it's time to get back to doing what I give you the orders to do. Right. And you will find, secondly, that term meant this, stand fast. It means to be on guard. It means be ready be aware, pay attention. Stand fast means to continue what you're doing, but while you're doing what you're doing, you must be prepared and you must be aware. Right. It means don't let your guard down. It means to watch and to pay attention. As a soldier, it meant this. There's a real enemy who could attack at any moment and we are to be expecting and looking for the unexpected. Right. And when you stand fast, it does not mean... Now see, there's another military term you may be familiar with, and that term is at ease. That term means relax. Take it easy. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's what at ease means. Yeah, but we're not talking about the term at ease. We're talking about the term stand fast. And what that means is you better pay attention. And even though you're busy, even though you're working, even though you're laboring, in the back of your mind you have to be prepared because there is a real enemy. Right. Right. So the first thing it means is to continue. The second thing it means is to, to be on guard. The third thing it means is to be ready. It means that you ought to be prepared that things could change in a moment's notice. Right. I mean, we could be deployed. Our orders could change just that quick. Right. It means uh, also this, be ready. That commander could return at any moment. Right. Though he just showed up and though he may have exited the room, it means you don't never know where he's going to show up again. Right. Right. He might show up at the chow hall. He might show up where you're working. You might pass him in the parking lot. You might see him on the range. And it means you better be prepared because he could come back at just any given moment. Amen. I have had commanders that just to, just, just to test the troops, they would come in the barracks and everybody would stop. And if you were sitting down, you'd jump up, come to attention. He'd say, stand fast. He would say a few words to us or whatever he wanted us to do. 
Then he'd walk out of the room. When he walked out, we'd go back to relaxing. And then just, I mean, he'd literally walk out, shut the door, turn around, and open the door again and walk right back in. He wanted to see if you were prepared and if you were uh, ready. Amen. This morning, that term stand fast is, has those three separate meanings. It means be prepared. Uh, it means to uh, be on guard. It means to continue right. doing what you're doing. Right. You realize over and over and over, I've read many of them to you, we are told repeatedly throughout the scripture to stand fast. You'll find this term is only mentioned once in the Old Testament in the book of Jeremiah. Every other mention of this term, stand fast, is solely found in the New Testament epistles. Amen. You won't find it in the Gospels. And you only find it in the New Testament epistles. And the message this morning is this. Stand fast. Right. Over and over and over in the New Testament we read those words because God wants you and I to stand fast. Right. Can I say number one? When we are to stand fast, we are to continue. We should continue to do what the Lord wants us to do. Right. We must press on and we must continue. Paul tells the young preacher, the young pastor, Timothy, in 2 Timothy 3.14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Paul's advice to this young preacher, this young pastor, we know he is broken hearted. We know uh, he is upset. We know he is discouraged because the Apostle Paul speaks about seeing and knowing Timothy's tears and his broken heartedness and his response to Timothy uh, being broken and Timothy being wounded and Timothy being discouraged right. and Timothy struggling. His response is this, a continue thou. Right. That means press on and continue to do what you know to do. Right. Hear me, there are times in this life where you're not going to know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, situations and problems and things are going to happen and you're not going to know what to do. Let me give you some advice this morning. Just continue. Right. Continue to do the things that you know to be right. right. Continue to pray. Continue to read your Bible. Continue to be faithful right. in church. Continue to witness. Yeah. Continue to live right. Listen, when you don't know what else to do, I promise you, God will be pleased and honored if you'll just continue thou. Hear me right. this morning. I, you must continue. Stand fast. That means press on and drive on and continue on. And in spite of adversity, trial or trouble. Right. Yes, you know what we've done this morning? We have gathered that we might acknowledge our great commander's presence. Right. We have stopped. Right. We have come to attention. And we are acknowledging his presence. We're acknowledging His person and we have come to the attention uh, that He is our Savior. He is our commander. But hear me, uh, tomorrow starts a brand new week. Right. And listen, uh, we honor Him today that He may help us to continue on all of next week. And then next Wednesday night we will stop and we'll go to meeting and we will uh, have church. What we're doing is we are stopping. We are coming to attention. And listen, when the commander enters the room, you know what we do? We stop everything else and we acknowledge and we respect and we honor His presence. Right. But then, we have to continue. This is what the Bible says. In the last days, there will be a great falling away. Just because there is a great falling away doesn't mean you have to fall away. Right. Right. It means you can continue. Hear me, some days the Christian life is just putting one foot in front of the other. Right. And you continue to walk right. when you don't feel like it, yeah. when you don't want to, when your heart's broke, when you're confused, when you're worried, when you're nervous, and when you're scared. Uh, listen, the tendency is to back up and to back off. But that ain't what stand fast means. 
Steadfast means yes. Yeah. Stop and acknowledge the commander's presence. Right. Yes, stop and reverence the commander. But listen, uh, the commander's already given us orders. And when he says, uh, stand fast, he means, hey, get back to work. Get back to doing what I told you to do. The orders I've given, go ahead and follow them. And hear me this morning. God expects you and I to continue on right. and to press on and to pray on and to preach on and to sing on and to serve on and to attend on and to do right and to live for God and to honor the Lord. Hey, stand fast this morning and continue thou. Amen. Continue. Listen, man. God set the Christian life up that it ain't rocket science. <coughs> You ain't, listen, you ain't got to be the head teller at Walmart, the head cashier at Walmart, uh, to, to follow the Lord Jesus. Right. You, you don't have to be brilliant. You ain't got to have a PhD. But all you, listen, here's the key to, to following the Lord. Just do what He tells you right. to do. Right. That, it's simple. God's got that thing laid out. Right. Now, men complicate it. 27 ways to please the Lord. The latest bestseller on the Christian book list. 84 things you need to do when going so well. Uh, you know, uh, 25 things you need to remember when facing it. No, no, no. Listen, you don't need all that. Let me tell you what God made it simple. Pray. Read your Bible. Come to church. Be a witness. And live right. Amen. Five things. All of that other stuff is noise and can cause confusion. If you'll keep those five things in mind, I promise you, you can live a life that's pleasing to God. Now, if you, once you do those five things, the Lord may burden you to do something else and may add to that. But here it is, in order to stay right with God, there ain't but five things. Do right, pray, read your Bible, come to church, and be a witness. Right. It ain't rocket science, man. So here you say, I'm struggling. Pray, read your Bible, come to church, be a witness, and live right. right. That's the key to the success in the Christian life. Right. You ain't gotta, uh, you ain't gotta know uh, every dispensation and what the, the the statue in the book of Daniel, what his big toe stand. You ain't gotta know all that. All you gotta do is look, pray, read your Bible, live right, be a witness, and right. come to church. Right. Simple. But can I be honest? It'll take you a lifetime to master those five things. Oh, yeah. We always look for something deeper. Oh, yeah. I want some great truth, some great nugget that I, you know, that God can reveal to me out of the listen, man. Just focus on those five things. Amen. And can I be honest, you're gonna have your hands full doing those five things. Yeah. Listen, I love Jesus with all my heart. Yeah. I've been saved 28 years. I, I, I'm working on 29, 28 and a half. And I love Jesus with all my heart. God knows I do. But can I be honest, some days I struggle with those five things. Yeah. Right. Some days it's a fight. Some days it's a battle just to sit down and read my Bible. Yeah. There's other days where reading my Bible just as, I mean, everything runs smooth as silk right. and stuff jumping off the page and right. the Lord's showing me stuff. The Lord's dealing with me. The Lord's helping me. I can feel the presence of God. But then I try to go pray. And it seems like I'm fighting bumblebees. The whole time I'm trying to pray. Right. Now I know y'all way more spiritual than me. And I know y'all don't have this trouble. But I get down and start praying. This is what I think. Uh, Lord, did I pay my credit card bill? Amen. I think it's due today. Lord, did I go by the dry cleaners and pick up my dry cleaner? Well, Lord, did I make sure I mailed that? Lord, did I do this? Lord, and it's a distraction. And listen, it'll take me 15, 20 minutes yeah. just to clear my head so I can pray. These other days, living right is easy. I mean, there ain't no problem. Just do right. right. Yeah. And there's other days where it's, a, it's tough. Yeah. Just lately, I've had a couple of issues. And God knows my heart. I just want to do right. right. I had to return some stuff. And, and I had bought two things. I was returning one thing. And so I gave her the email. I ordered it online. I gave her the email. And she said, all right, sir, that'll be $38 going back on your, your credit card. I said, wait a minute. I didn't pay $38. I only paid $17. And she looked down and she went, oh, my soul, thank you so much. She said, I was about to give you back $38 when really I shouldn't give you back but $18. And this is what I thought. Listen, I don't want God mad at me. Amen. 
Amen. My relationship with the Lord is far more important than 20 stinking right. dollars. Right. You can't buy me for 20 dollars. Right. I can't listen. Uh, I want to make sure I did right uh, by the Lord. And listen, then I ordered something from Amazon, tried to return it, and them suckers issued me a refund twice. You ask my wife, I called them suckers four different times, begging them to take one of their refunds back. And after talking to four different people, all of them in India, by the way, I explained the situation, went through it, and they said, ah, just keep it. I thought, yeah, that's easy for you to say. You, you may not be living for Jesus, but I'm trying to live for God, and I want to make sure I'm right. Listen, $54, it's not, I, that is not worth the sacrifice of my relationship with the Lord. My point is, you're going to stay busy the rest of your days just trying to do those five things. But God's made it simple. If you'll focus on those five things and not your problems, not the world, not what's going on, not uh, uh, your hobbies and all that stuff, if you'll focus on doing those five things, when it's all said and done, you can look at the Lord and say, Lord, I stood fast. Amen. Continue. Listen, this morning, you just got to press on yeah. and continue. Be faithful. Of course, we're going to stop and acknowledge His presence. Our great commander deserves our honor and right. respect. But he wants us, after honoring him, to continue on and follow his orders. Number two. Not only should we continue, but number two, we should be on guard. Yeah. Yeah. You realize this morning there's a real enemy that could attack you yeah. at any moment. Right. Yeah. This is what 1 Peter 5, 8 says. Be sober. That means serious. The Christian life is not a game. Right. Listen, the Lord takes your Christian life very seriously. Yes. Can I be honest? The devil takes your Christian life very seriously. Right. It seems to me the only people that don't take the Christian life very serious is the Christian. Right. This morning, it's a big deal. So the Bible says be sober. I mean, be serious. Pay attention. And listen, this is not a game. But then it says be vigilant. That means be on guard. Yeah. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. He, did you catch that? Yeah. Be sober. Take it seriously. Right. He said be vigilant. That means stay on guard. Listen, be careful of what you say, what you watch, where you go because there is a real Death, right. He was looking to destroy you oh. and destroy your family. Yeah. Jesus said this in Matthew 26, verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We can all holler amen right there. Paul put it this way. The things that it would do, those are the things I don't do. Right. The things I don't want to do, right. those are the things I end up doing. Right. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? May I be honest, the closer I get to the Lord, the more I mourn over being shackled to this body of flesh. It hinders me. It prevents me uh, from walking with God the way I want to. My heart's right. I want to live right. I want to do right. Uh, but this flesh, I have to contend with it every single day. It don't love God. It don't love the book. It don't love traveling. It don't love preaching. It don't love anything spiritual. Yeah. You say, why? Because it ain't going to heaven. Not in this form. And this morning, if you're living for this, you're living for a corpse. Yeah. Yeah. This trash is dead. According to the book of Romans, it's dead. Right. Not sick, don't feel bad. It says it is dead. It is a corpse. So to pamper and cater to a corpse is a waste of time, effort, and energy. Right. And this morning, we must be on guard because when you least expect it, the devil's going to show up and try to knock you for a loop. Yeah. That is just a fact. Oh, yeah. Listen, you ever had things go so well? I mean, everything just, I mean, just clicking. And, and if things are going so good, you walk around like this because you just know something, something's, fixing to, right. something's fixing to blow up. Something's fixing to happen. Right. 
Hear me. You better be on guard. You, listen, be sober. Take this thing seriously because the devil ain't playing. And if the devil has an opportunity, he will knock you or your family out of this thing Amen. and foul you up and wreck you and ruin you. You better be on guard. Right. Hear me. Listen to me this morning. These are not your enemies. These folks written right here are not your enemies. Right. These are your comrades. Right. These are your fellow soldiers. Right. These are the ones that are in the foxholes with you. Listen, your real enemy is not sitting here. <coughs> your real enemy is not even flesh and blood. Your right. real enemy is the devil. Right. Right. <coughs> now the devil will use people if, you, if, 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 if you know if you ain't paying attention. You'll say, "Well, so and so made me mad." That ain't so and so. Right. It's the devil. When you recognize that truth, it makes it a whole lot easier to put up with so and so. Yeah. There is a real devil, and listen, in these last days, we must stay on guard. You know what happened, what the Bible says about Nehemiah? He goes back to Jerusalem from Babylon, and they start building the walls again of Jerusalem. This is what the Bible says. They worked with one hand and had a sword in the other. Yeah. Now, it get real frustrating. <clears throat> trying to work with one hand. Amen. I would be tempted to take my sword and stick it down in the dirt and work and keep it at, at, at arm's reach. But they were so aware of the enemies that the devil did not want Jerusalem to be built back up. That they knew those enemies could attack at any given moment. And they refused to put their sword down. They worked with one hand and carried a sword in the other. Hear me this morning. Uh, you better be on guard. And you better adopt that same mindset. Right. You say, preacher, I think you're taking it way too seriously. Yeah, you, you think that until the devil shows up at your house. Right. And it causes all kinds of grief and sorrow. You better be on guard. You better keep your Bible handy. You better pray. You right. better read it. You better study it. You better stay faithful in the church. Because there's a real devil that wants to knock you out of this thing. Yeah. Right. Amen. Number yeah. one, we got to continue. Number two, we got to stay on guard. But number three, number three, we got to be ready. The word stand fast means be prepared. And this morning, we've got to be ready. For at any moment, things could change. Yeah. Mark 13, 33, Jesus said this, Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time yeah. Yeah. Listen, Jesus could come just like that. Right. This is what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. It's going to happen in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Right. Scientists did an experiment, and they figured out how fast the twinkling of an eye, not a blinking of an eye, but a twinkling of an eye, is one one millionth of a second. You ain't going to have time to get ready. Right. You better be ready. Right. This morning, stand fast is the order given. Stand fast is what, what God's telling His soldiers. Stand fast and continue on. Uh, be on guard, but be prepared. Be ready. Things could change at any given moment. Right. Hear me? Uh, this morning, we better be ready because Jesus is coming soon. Listen, I said before, the commander would walk in. We would stop and acknowledge His presence. And sometimes, He'd turn around and walk right back in and surprise us to see what we were up to. Then the other times I'd see him in my room, but then I'd go get in my car and start toward work. When I got to the shop, I'd walk in and run headlong right into me, be standing right before me. I, listen, I wasn't ready, I wasn't prepared, and it took me a minute to, 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 to gather myself. I would salute him, say, good morning, sir, and I'd go on about my way. Right. Hear me? That's the way it is when the Lord comes. He may be, you may be on your way to work. You may have talked to him this morning, but he could come back today. Right. We must be ready. Jesus is coming so things are fixing to change Amen. it means prepare for every eventuality the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4.14 for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, 
with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful passage concerning the rapture of the church of the living God. One day Jesus will come and snatch us out. And Paul tells us about the rapture in the verses I just read to you. But do you know what he said before he deals with the rapture? In 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, I began reading at verse number uh, fifth, uh, verse number 14. But do you know what he gives them before he tells them about the rapture? He gives them verse number 11. This is what verse 11 says. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Amen. You know what he's saying? Yes, Jesus is coming. Yes, I'm going to tell you all about it. But before I talk to you about his coming, I want you to know you ought to, you ought to study to be quiet. You ought to do your own business. What he's saying is you ought to stay right with God and be ready. Because right. when Jesus comes, you won't have time to get ready. Right. You won't be able to repent. You won't be able to tell the Lord I'm sorry. You won't be able to hand out a tract. You won't be able to pray a prayer. You won't be able to come to church. You won't be able to make a difference. You won't be able to give. Right. You won't be able to do any of those things. Well, our opportunity is now, right now. Now, and if we forsake this opportunity, we may never get another one because Jesus is coming soon. Be prepared because Jesus could come. Amen. Anyway. That's right. Our commander says this. Stand fast. Amen. We've gathered. We've acknowledged His presence. We're fixing to go eat. When we, when we walk out of here, the order is the same as it's always been for the church of the living God. Stand fast. Amen. And hear me this morning. Stay right with God. Amen. Continue. That's what it means, continue. It means be on guard. But it also means be prepared. Things could change at any moment. And this morning, I want to give you this as I close this scale of time. As I give you this. Someone wrote this. I don't know who said it, but I'm going to read it to you. It says this, Life is a battlefield. Amen. Many times, losses are measured inch by inch. First, a Wednesday night prayer meeting. Then, a Sunday night service. Then, Sunday school. Then Sunday morning preaching. <laughs> then personal prayer time and Bible reading. And before you know it, you haven't been to a Wednesday night prayer meeting in over a year. You've quit Sunday school altogether. Sunday night preaching is rarely attended. You haven't strung together four Sundays in a row in attendance. You see, these little things become big things right. an inch at a time. Amen. Ground that is lost, that may not seem like a lot, but if you put it all together, those inches become miles. Amen. Some are miles from where they once were. This morning, don't overlook the inches. They grow into miles before you know it. Satan is fine at taking inches. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to take an inch at a time. He's not looking to take seven, eight, ten feet at a time. He'll be satisfied with an inch. Right. Because right. if he can get an inch from you today, he'll get an inch from you tomorrow. Yep. He'll get an inch from you next week. He'll get an inch from you next month. Yep. And before you know it, all those inches add up until you are a mile away oh, yeah. from the Lord. Amen. Satan is fine with taking an inch at a time yep. because those inches are easily won. Don't give an inch. Because if you give him one inch, it makes it a whole lot easier to give him another. It's a whole lot easier to say, ah, that ain't a big deal. That'll be fine. That's not a big deal. But hear me, those inches add up. And can I say this? Ground lost is rarely made up. This morning, they say football is a game of inches. I played football all through high school. And inches matter in the game of football. 
I have watched the game. I watched where Colorado got beat several weeks ago. There was just, just maybe a minute left. They were driving down the field. And they got, it was fourth down, and this guy's trying to reach the first down marker. He gets so close, it looks like he makes it. But then they bring out the chains. And he missed the first down by about an inch, inch and a half. Colorado lost that game over that much stuff. Yeah. No more chances. Because you failed to gather that inch. But hear me, it didn't just start on that play. Right. The three plays prior to that, if they had picked up just that much of it on first down, yep. and picked up that much more on second down, picked up that much more on third down, when it came time for fourth down, you would have had no trouble making it. See, we want to lump it all together on that fourth down play. Well, he, he got stopped short. No. Right. That inch and a half could have been one a quarter inch at a time in the three previous ones. This morning, don't give up that half inch. You said it ain't a big deal. It's a big deal to them. It cost them the entire game over that much space. Right. Yeah. It makes a difference. Wednesday night service makes a difference. You said it ain't that big deal. It's just that much. And hear me, once the whistle blew and the measurement was made, that's it, game over. Then turn the ball over. The other team just ran out the clock. Yeah. Cost them everything. Because they didn't fight for every inch. If they if they honestly, if they'd have just got a quarter of an inch each time, it had enough. Yeah. They didn't fight for it. They say this about the game of football. Defense wins championships. There's a lot of truth in that. I refer you back to the game I was talking about earlier. That defensive player, you know what he did? He stopped him that much short and won the game. You know what our problem is? We just like playing offense. We don't ever think about playing defense. This morning you have a real adversary who wants to, to ruin you and ruin your family and your children and your church and your preacher and your friends. He wants to rob you of all of that stuff. Yeah. You have got to stop giving him that inch. Yeah. Because those inches turn into a mile and somewhere down the road when the game is on the line You'll look back and say, man, if I'd have just not gave up an inch here or there or there, I could have crossed the goal line and won. Yeah. But because I gave up an inch there and there and there, now I am stopped short and I do not get the blessing because I gave up an inch at a time. Yeah. This morning, stand fast as we stand. Father, Thank you for your good word. Thank you for your kindness and generosity. Father, I pray you'd help us not to give up that inch. Dear God, the devil's satisfied to just take that <coughs> inch from us. We see it feels like an inch is not a big deal. Ah, it's not that big a deal. It's just an inch. But Lord, those inches add up. And before you know it, Lord, we're a mile away from you. Lord, help us to to not give up those inches. Help us to regain some of those inches that we've lost. Help us to stand fast and be prepared for you can come at any moment. Help us, Lord, to be on guard. Help us, Father, to continue to do what you've told us to do. Father, I pray you help your people this morning. Deal with us about the seriousness of the hour and of our condition, and of the coming of the Lord. We love you in Jesus' name.
you gave up some inches to the devil? If you look back over your life, and if you're honest, some of you never got back. Don't give the devil an inch.